Tony Romo was known today for being paid a shitload of money to announce NFL games for CBS. I would say this could make people forget about his old job, but that really wouldn't be true. Being the starting quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys brings plenty of fame and attention, especially when you're good. From the time Romo first became the Cowboys starting QB in 2006 at the age of 26, he produced very, very well. But while Romo consistently produced well when he was healthy and won a very respectable 61% of his regular season starts, postseason success eluded the Cowboys during his tenure. Because of the team's failure to even make a conference championship game with Romo under center, and some unfortunate mishaps and big moments on Romo's part, Romo had the reputation as a choke artist. But was Romo really a fraud when in big moments, or do fans just have a selective memory? This video aims to find out. Enjoy. Romo became the Cowboys starter midway through the 2006 season after spending three and a half years as a little-known undrafted backup quarterback back from Eastern Illinois. Romo is easily the most talented overlooked QB prospect to ever take Drew Bledsoe's job, which he did officially starting in Week 8. In his first career start, the Cowboys destroyed the Carolina Panthers 35-14, but Romo's first career loss came the next week versus Washington, where he set up Mike Vanderjack with a 35-yard game-winning field goal attempt. However, the field goal was blocked, and on the return, a Cowboys player committed a face mask, so Washington got 15 extra yards to kick a 47-yard game-winning field goal. This type of fluky loss would be a theme throughout the rest of Romo's career. The Cowboys went 6-4 in Romo's 10 starts, finishing 9-7 overall. The offense finished an excellent third in points per drive, while the defense lagged behind, finishing 23rd in points allowed per drive. Much like with other notable quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Dan Marino, and Peyton Manning to a slightly lesser extent, the consistent defensive support was never really there for Romo. Despite the 9-7 record, the team secured a wildcard matchup on the road versus Seattle, and it's a game that formed many narratives about Romo's career. The first half was pretty nondescript until Romo led a 76-yard touchdown drive just before halftime to give the Cowboys a 10-6 halftime lead. The two teams traded touchdowns in the third quarter to give Dallas a 17-13 lead going into the final stanza. Romo led the team on a field goal drive to take a 20-13 lead with 10 minutes left, and Dallas's defense held firm on a goal line stand, giving Romo the ball back at his own two-yard line. But that's when things started getting weird. Romo completed a screen pass to Terry Glenn, who got stripped and ended up giving Seattle a safety to make it 20-15. Seattle capitalized with a 50-yard touchdown drive to take a 21-20 lead with four minutes left. Romo held firm, though. With help from Julius Jones, he drove the team 70 yards to Seattle's two-yard line to set up a chip shot go-ahead field goal. Then it happened. Romo famously botched the snap, and the kick was aborted effectively ending the game and the Cowboys season in a 21-20 loss. Ironically, Romo was this close to being the hero as he alertly picked up the ball and ran towards the end zone. If not for Seattle's Jordan Babineau making the clutch tackle and Cowboys kicker Martin Gramatica throwing a horrific block, maybe the narrative around Romo would be different, but there's no way around it. In this particular instance, Romo choked. Heading into the 2007 season, there were some concerns as to whether or not Romo was a fluke, but Romo quickly showed he was legit. He threw for over 4,200 yards, 36 touchdowns, and helped the Cowboys dominate all season long to the tune of a 13-3 record and home field advantage throughout the playoffs. The Cowboys looked primed to make it back to another conference championship game for the first time since 1995, and their divisional round foes would be the divisional rival New York Giants, led by crayon eater Eli Manning. There was some controversy leading up to the game as Romo had taken the then-girlfriend Jessica Simpson on a trip to Cabo to have absolutely disgusting and immoral premarital sex. Excuse me while I throw up. The game started with Eli Manning finding Amani Tuma for a 52-yard touchdown, but Romo and the Cowboys would eventually settle down, leading two long and time-consuming touchdown drives to go up 14-7 with a minute left in the first half. But again, the Giants would respond with a huge touchdown drive in the final minute to go into halftime tied at 14. Dallas took a 7 17-14 lead after another time-consuming field goal drive to start the second half, but on their next possession late in the third quarter, there was a huge drop by Patrick Clayton that ended the drive prematurely. But even if the pass was caught, in no way would the game have been over. The Giants would go on to add another touchdown off of a short field to go up 21-17 early in the fourth quarter. The Cowboys got three more offensive possessions, but failed to score on any of them. The game ended with Romo heaving a desperation pass on 4th and 11 from the Giants' 23-yard 
yard line, and it was picked off in the end zone to seal the 21-17 loss for Dallas. Unlike the season before, there wasn't a singular play that would lead someone to blame Romo, but the Cowboys' offense was ineffective when it mattered most. The much bollyhooed offensive line didn't hold up in the fourth quarter, Romo took some untimely sacks, and grew a little impatient by looking for deep throws downfield when he really didn't need to. I'm not going to say Romo choked, since this Giants defense proved they were legit when they dropped their nuts all over the historic 2007 Patriots offense in the Super Bowl, but this certainly wasn't an example of Romo playing great and being let down. The 2008 Cowboys had high expectations, as they were returning much of the same team from the year before. Up to this point, Romo had been durable, but 2008 would see the first of his many injuries. He ended up missing three games with a broken pinky finger on his throwing hand. The Cowboys went 1-2 and two in those three games, and this would obviously end up being crucial to their playoff chances. In the 13 games Romo did play in, he was once again productive, albeit not as much as the year before. The Cowboys went 7-2 in his first nine starts and were sitting at 8-4 going into the last four games of the season. This is the year where another unfavorable Romo narrative emerged, that he wasn't good in the month of December. Whether or not that's true for his career is still debatable, but in regards to 2008, it was absolutely true. The Cowboys went 1-3 and, and Romo had a disastrous 5 touchdown, 6 interception ratio and a disastrous 67.9 passer rating. The cherry on top of the shit Sunday was a brutal 44-6 season ending loss to Philadelphia in the final week, which could have put Dallas in the playoffs had they won. There were close losses during the year to that season's two Super Bowl contestants, Pittsburgh and Arizona, that certainly haunted the Cowboys. They lost 30-24 in overtime to Arizona following a blocked punt and blew a 13-3 lead in the fourth quarter to Pittsburgh to lose 20-13 after a brutal pick six thrown by Romo with two minutes left. Romo did lead two game-winning drives to balance those losses out, but still, at this point the Romo era was three years in and while he had nice stats and a hot girlfriend, he had zero playoff wins, and the narratives of him being a choker were beginning to solidify. 2009 was a bounce-back year for both Romo and the Cowboys. The team finished 11-5, won the NFC East, and, for what would be the only time in the Romo era, had a top 12 defense, finishing second in points allowed per drive. Romo had a great year, throwing for almost 4,500 yards, 26 touchdowns, and just 9 interceptions. He was also named to the Pro Bowl for the third time. But even with all his success, there were some missed opportunities. The team blew a 1-point lead with 3.40 left in a 33-31 loss versus the Giants, a 10-point second-half lead in a 17-10 loss versus the Broncos, which ended with the offense stalling out on Denver's 2-yard line, two missed field goals in a 31-24 loss to the Giants again, as well as another missed field goal in a 20-17 loss to San Diego. There were also good moments in the clutch, however, as Romo would throw game-winning touchdowns in the fourth quarter and overtime versus Kansas City, Washington, and Philadelphia. The Cowboys still hadn't won a playoff game since 1996, however, and the pressure was immense for Romo to end that drought. He would play a huge role in doing so, as the Cowboys destroyed rival Philadelphia 34-14 at home in the wildcard round with Romo playing very well. Romo finally had the playoff monkey off his back, but the joy would be short-lived, as the next week the team would get their shit pushed in on the road by the Minnesota Vikings by a score of 34-3. The game was a complete team failure by Dallas. Romo committed three turnovers, two fumbles and an interception, the offensive line gave up six sacks, the special teams missed two field goals, and the defense allowed Brett Favre to have one of the best games of his Hall of Fame career, throwing for four touchdowns, no interceptions, and a 134.4 passer rating. Through four seasons as an NFL starter, the notion of Romo being a very good player who repeatedly came up short in big moments had some merit, but would it change moving forward? The 2010 season was a lost season for both Romo and the Cowboys, as Romo suffered a season-ending broken collarbone early in Week 7 versus the Giants. But even before Romo went down, the team was sitting at just 1-4 and and had suffered a brutal 13-7 loss to Washington, which ended with the offense stalling out at the Washington 13-yard line as time expired, a 27-20 home loss to Chicago, a crushing 34-27 home loss to Tennessee, which featured a wild fourth quarter where Romo led two game-tying drives but also two interceptions, one of which set up Tennessee with a five-yard touchdown drive. Romo's final full start of the season was another close 24-21 loss to the Vikings. Romo once again led a game tying touchdown drive early in the fourth quarter to tie it at 21, but threw another brutal INT to 
set up the Vikings in great field position to kick the game-winning field goal with four minutes left. Cowboys ended up finishing the year at 6-10, prompting human corpse Jerry Jones to fire Wade Phillips in midseason and replace him with the most infamous clapper on the planet, Jason Garrett. 2011 was one of Tony Romo's best seasons. He threw for almost 4,200 yards, 31 touchdowns, and just 10 interceptions with an amazing 102.5 passer rating. The Cowboys' offense was very good, finishing top eight in both yards and points per drive. Yet, despite Romo's elite production, the team finished just 8-8 eight and eight and missed the playoffs. The biggest culprit, of course, was the defense, which was a below-average 19th in points allowed per drive. The other reason is Romo having to play hero almost every week. There were some weeks where he would pull the games out, such as when he led game-winning drives versus San Francisco, Washington, twice, and Miami. But as always with Romo, people better remember the times he lost. Week 1 versus the Jets is a prime example. Romo's final stats look great, but in the fourth quarter, he had a brutal fumble on the Jets' goal line where a score would have most likely sealed the game. And with the game tied at 24 following a blocked punt return touchdown for the Jets, not Romo's fault, Romo ended up throwing an interception, Romo's fault, to set New York up with a game-winning field goal, which lost the game for Dallas 27-24. There was also a 34-30 home loss to Detroit where the team blew a 27-3 second half lead. Romo threw two pick sixes in the third to help Detroit cut the lead to 27-17. Dallas was up 30-17 heading into the fourth, but after 10 straight Detroit points and Dallas leading 30-27 with four minutes left, Romo threw another interception which set up the Lions with great field position. They would capitalize on the field position to take a 34-30 lead, which they held on to. There were also several losses where Romo did his part to put the team in position to win, but was let down late in the fourth by his defense and coaching. There was a 16-13 blown lead with 2.30 left and a 20-16 loss to New England. But the two worst losses were a 19-13 overtime loss to Arizona, where Romo set up kicker Dan Bailey with a game-winning 49-yard field goal as time expired. Bailey actually made the kick, but it was negated by Jason Garrett calling a timeout. Bailey got iced by his own coach as he missed the retry. The game went into overtime with Arizona scoring the game-winning touchdown on the first possession. But the absolute worst and most gut-wrenching loss on the season was at home to the New York Giants. Not just for how it happened, but because it would end up blowing the team's playoff chances. Romo was phenomenal that game, throwing for 321 yards, 4 touchdowns, and 0 interceptions. Dallas had a 34-22 lead with 6 minutes left, but they allowed New York to score 2 touchdowns in the last 5 minutes. Dallas would miss a field goal as time expired to lose 37-34. Romo's injury bug popped up again in the penultimate game versus Philadelphia, where he suffered a bruised hand and only played one series. The Cowboys lost that game 20-7 to set up another de facto playoff game in the last week of the season versus the Giants, but the team came out flat, and the eventual Super Bowl champion Giants steamrolled them 31-14. 2012 saw Romo take a step back statistically, throwing 19 interceptions and having a 90.5 passer rating. But overall, the Cowboys stayed stuck in neutral, finishing 8-8 eight eight once again. The Romo-led offense remained effective, finishing top 10 in both points and yards per drive, but the defense regressed even more, finishing a putrid 25th in points allowed per drive. Much like 2011, there were moments of clutch brilliance and disgust for Romo. He actually led the league in fourth quarter comebacks with five, which kept the Cowboys from being a complete dumpster fire, but as always, there were also some memorable gaps. The first came in week six versus the eventual Super Bowl champion Baltimore Ravens. Dallas was trailing 31-23 with five minutes left. Romo led a clutch 80-yard touchdown drive, but didn't convert the two-point conversion after Des Bryant dropped it. More on this later. However, the Cowboys recovered the onside kick, and after a defensive pass interference penalty, the Cowboys were in position to win the game with a 51-yard field goal. But kicker Dan Bailey missed it, and Dallas lost 31-29. A few weeks later at home versus the Giants, another memorable loss would occur. Romo threw four interceptions, but he was still a few inches away from being the hero. As with Dallas trailing 29-24 with 16 seconds left, he lofted a pass to Des Bryant in the end zone from 37 yards away. It was initially called a touchdown, but further review showed Bryant's hand landed slightly out of bounds, negating the catch. Dallas was unable to score on the next few plays, and the 29-24 loss was final. The next week saw a disappointing 19-13 road loss to Atlanta, although it wasn't as crushing as the aforementioned losses. A 34-31 overtime home loss to New Orleans would end up being another devastating blow to the team's playoff chances. Roma was phenomenal, throwing for 
416 yards, four touchdowns, and zero interceptions, and he also led two clutch fourth quarter drives to tie the game at 31. Dallas got the ball to start overtime, but went three and out. New Orleans, led by future Hall of Fame quarterback Drew Brees, drove 72 yards downfield for the game-winning field goal to seal the 34-31 loss for Dallas. Despite all of these heartbreaks, Dallas once again had a chance to sneak into the playoffs in the final week. All they had to do was beat Washington on the road. Romo was shaky, throwing interceptions on the first two possessions, and the offense overall was sluggish. The Redacted had a commanding 21-10 lead with 11 minutes left, but Dallas fought back, cutting it to 21-18 and getting the ball back with 3.33 left in the game. Romo had a chance to send Dallas into the playoffs, but instead he just reinforced his choker label by throwing a brutal interception. Washington would capitalize off of it to score a touchdown to take a 10-point lead with a minute 15 left to seal the 28-18 season-ending loss for Dallas. Tough scene. The 2013 season for the Cowboys was pretty much an exact carbon copy of 2012. Romo was once again very good, throwing 31 touchdowns and leading an elite offense, which finished fourth in points per drive. The defense, however, continued to be atrocious, finishing 30th in points allowed per drive. Once again, Romo had his moments in the sun late in games, leading four game-winning drives, including a memorable one on the road versus Washington with a broken back that sidelined him in the final week of the season. Again, though, with Romo, it's never that simple, as the Cowboys once again found a way to lose several games in heartbreaking fashion. The most memorable was a legendary 51-48 home loss to the Peyton Manning-led Denver Broncos. Romo had a phenomenal day, throwing for over 500 yards and five touchdowns, but he threw a costly interception late that set Denver up for the game-winning field goal as time expired. There was a 17-16 loss to Kansas City, which saw Romo fail to lead a go-ahead drive on three fourth-quarter possessions when trailing 17-13. There was also a 30-21 loss to San Diego where the Cowboys had the ball down 23-21 with 12 minutes left, but were unable to do anything with it before giving up a 56-yard touchdown. Keeping in tradition with the rest of Romo's career, there were several losses that were just plain old shit luck. The aforementioned loss to Denver was probably the worst, but a 31-30 loss to Detroit is right up there. Romo threw two fourth-quarter touchdowns to give Dallas a 10-point lead both times, and led a field goal drive that put Dallas up 30-24 with a minute left. Left. but unfortunately his defense gave up an 80-yard touchdown drive in the last minute. Then there was a 37-36 home loss to the Aaron rodgers list Green Bay Packers. Dallas had a commanding 36-24 lead with 8 minutes left, but Green Bay responded with an 80-yard touchdown drive to cut it to 36-31 with 4 minutes left before Romo threw a terrible interception to set Green Bay up at midfield. Green Bay capitalized with another touchdown to go up 37-36 with a minute 34 left. Having a chance to redeem himself, Romo would throw another interception to end the game. As mentioned earlier, Romo would miss the de facto playoff game in the last week of the season versus Philadelphia due to a back injury. Dallas lost that game 24-22 to once again finish 8-8 eight and, eight and out of the playoffs for the fourth straight year. The 2014 season would be both beautiful and heartbreaking for Cowboys fans. Behind an elite offensive line and with the help of an all-pro running back in DeMarco Murray, Romo had the best season of his career, finishing with 34 touchdowns, just 9 interceptions, and a league-leading 113.2 passer rating. Romo also led four game-winning drives and was truly phenomenal all year long. The offense was a machine, finishing second in points per drive, although the defense continued to be mediocre, finishing just 17th in points allowed per drive. Romo missed one game due to his consistent back issues, which Dallas lost to Arizona 28-17. This loss would end up being crucial to the Cowboys' playoff seeding, as they missed out on a first-round bye despite a 12-4 record, due to a conference win percentage tiebreaker with the fellow 12-4 Seattle Seahawks and Green Bay Packers. However, the team did win the NFC East, so they got a home playoff game versus the Detroit Lions. They extracted some revenge for their 2011 and 2013 losses with a memorable 24-20 win, capped off by Romo throwing a game-winning touchdown pass to Terrence Williams with a few minutes left. Although Lions fans will only remember the game for a controversial defensive pass interference flag being picked up in the fourth quarter, that could have extended ended a Lions drive while they had a 2017 lead. Nevertheless, the Cowboys advanced to the divisional round to face the Green Bay Packers, led by NFL MVP Aaron Rodgers. The Packers took an early 7-0 lead thanks to a Rodgers touchdown pass, but Romo responded with two touchdown passes in a row to take a 14-7 lead. This began what is a pretty overlooked portion of the game. Dallas had a blocked field goal that went up 14-7 with 34 seconds left in the first half, then Green Bay scored a field goal just before halftime to make it 14 to 
28-10, a six-point swing. On Dallas's first drive of the second half, DeMarco Murray fumbled on what would have been a probable touchdown. Green Bay took the turnover and capitalized with another field goal. That's a potential 10-point swing. So instead of being up somewhere like 24-7, Dallas was only up 14-13. Dallas would add another touchdown to go up 21-13, but Rodgers would roar right back with another touchdown pass on 3rd and 15 to make it 21-20 Dallas heading into what would be a very memorable fourth quarter. Dallas punted and Green Bay drove down the field again for another touchdown as Rodgers fired a missile between two Dallas defenders to take a 26-21 lead. There were nine minutes left still though. However, on second and eight, Romo took a sack and then threw a completion short of the sticks on third down to set up a fourth and two at the Green Bay 32-yard line with 4.42 left. Romo went for the home run, lofting up a beautiful throw to his all-pro wide receiver Bryant, who leaped over a hapless Sham Shields to grab it and set Dallas up at the Green Bay one-yard line. But after a Green Bay challenge, it was determined that Bryant did not properly secure the ball before it hit the ground, thus overturning the call and ruling the pass incomplete. Dallas would never get the ball again, as the NFL MVP would convert two clutch third downs on Green Bay's final drive to run out the clock and send the Cowboys home with a brutal 26-21 season-ending loss. Nobody would know it at the time, but this game would, for all intents and purposes, be the last meaningful game of Tony Romo's career. After 2014, Tony Romo would start just four more games in 2015 and make just one appearance in relief in 2016. The already injury-prone Romo suffered a broken collarbone two games in 2015, but would come back later that year just to re-break it again. He still owned the starting job at the beginning of the 2016 preseason, but suffered yet another major back injury in the opening preseason game and lost his job to unheralded rookie Dak Prescott. It may have seemed longer, but Romo was the Cowboys' starting quarterback for just eight seasons. And even that's being generous, considering he didn't become a starter until midway through 2006. So the question remains, was Tony Romo just a choking loser, or was he an unlucky great quarterback? Like most things, the answer lies somewhere in between. When it comes to athletes, most narratives are formed early in their careers, and Romo did truly fail to execute in big spots consistently from 2006 to 2009. While he would still have his down moments in the clutch from 2011 to 2014, he was also much more consistent, and in all honesty, was the only thing preventing Dallas from being a bottom dweller by leading several game-winning drives every year. As I outlined in the video, those 2011 to 2013 Cowboys teams were just a few plays here and there from winning double-digit games and making the playoffs each year. As was the case with other quarterbacks I've taken an in-depth look at like Rodgers, Breeze, Marino, and Peyton, Romo never had a consistent defense to support him. Only one time did he have a top 10 defense, and in five of his eight seasons as the Cowboys' primary starter, he had a below average defense. Could this have led to him forcing some throws in big moments? I don't doubt it. The numbers say, though, from 2016 to 2014, Romo was one of the best clutch quarterbacks in the entire league in the fourth quarter and overtime when the game was tied or his team was down one to eight points. There's also the factor of bad luck. While I don't give Romo a pass for botching the snap versus Seattle in 2006, or his disastrous playoff losses to the Giants and Vikings in 2007 and 2009, I believe he was robbed in 2014. And like Dirk Nowitzki in the NBA, it takes just one magical playoff run to change the narrative. Nobody knows if the Dez play had been ruled to catch whether or not Dallas wins that game or even goes on to win the Super Bowl. But that was Romo's moment, and you can't help but feel it was taken away from him. Romo is also unique in that his career started late and ended relatively early. As in today's NFL, having just eight seasons as a primary starter on your resume is pretty short. When he finally seemed to be in the perfect situation where he didn't have to carry the offense, his body broke down. There's no denying when he was healthy, Romo was a very good quarterback who would have had more postseason success if he wasn't stuck with so many terrible defenses. Much like with Drew Brees, Romo gets unfairly penalized for carrying some very lackluster teams to mediocre records, which should actually be a mark in his favor, not against it. He didn't play long enough to be a Hall of Famer like some Cowboys fans say, but he should be remembered as a very good quarterback who overcame shaky clutch moments early in his career, 2006 to 2009, to become a mostly reliable clutch quarterback in the back half of his career from 2011 to 2014. But the fact is, those chokes early in his career still happened, and combined with his long list of injuries, Romo will have to settle for being just a very good quarterback and not an all-time great. Fuck Tom Brady.